come on over here. Good boy. Now how's my buddy doing? Alright. Here we are. <laughs> Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to uh, New Mexico Outdoors with Mountaintop Bob and uh, the Boss Man. So I kind of got a challenge or I've seen a challenge or was prompted by a challenge to uh, my next video um, and have it for beginners somehow so <clears throat> so here's what the deal is um, I've got a full-blooded Catahoula Cur Catahoula Leopard Cur um, sitting here beside me the boss man and I want to talk about what you have to have if you're going to um, get a big dog for a house pet. Um, and that's what I train for is house pets, or at least that's what I'm training him for is a house pet. Uh, so he's going to leave. Let's see where he goes. What are you going to do? And keep an eye on him. Um, sniff around, see if he's got any food over there. Boss man, come. Come. Come on, hup. come on, hup. come on, come on, hup. come on, buddy. All right, that's a good boy. All right, so what the deal is, if you're going to get a big old dog like this, um, and Boss Man's 10 months old right now, he'll be a year old in the middle of July, and this is June. June, July, so uh, 11 months. He's 11 months old. Be a year old next month. So he's about as big as he's going to get, except he'll fill out some more. And um, <clears throat> this dog, like German Shepherds and um, other high energy dogs, are a handful. And so if you've never had one, um, this video is dedicated to telling you what you need and the things you need to do to um, encourage uh, your big dog to be a, a, I don't know, somebody fun to live with. And Boss Man is, he's a lot of fun to live with. Um, you have to be patient. And it's, it's important for folks to make the decision, are they gonna have the time? Are they gonna have the ability, um, everything necessary to bring a dog like this along? Because if not, Oftentimes they'll end up on a chain in a backyard, um, maybe in a kennel, in a garage. And when you do that and you don't spend time with them and you just leave them there day after day, it just rips the heart and soul right out of them. Um, and I hate to see that happen. So that's kind of what this video is about. If you're a beginner dog owner, um, what you have to do and what you can expect, I'm gonna go over all that stuff to getting this far. Um, in the beginning of this video, there's some playtime outside, and that's also um, used for training. Um, but we've kind of held back on that because this dog is so aggressive. Um, he just does not know when to stop playing. He does not know when to stop when you're trying to train him with treats. So we've been working on calming him down. And um, so let me get into uh, some of the stuff you got to have to uh, make this work. Boss man, come. Come. Come on. Come here, buddy. Number one thing. Hup. Come on. Hup. Hup. Come on. Hup. Hup. Good boy. So these are little commands that you got to teach them. And I wanted to show this <clears throat> real quick. This collar that I use. See, it slides right over his head. <laughs> Might have to let it out a little bit. All right, so we're gonna take that off. He wants to play with it. I want to show it and how it works. All right, now settle down, settle, settle. Let me get out here in the front. What the deal is, is your leash goes here and that's as tight as this collar will go. Um, so what this does, is it lets them know that you're there. It's all, it's all I've ever needed. Um, it's called a martingale. Um, so that's what I use for training. And again, I'm training a house pet. I'm not training a guard dog. I'm not training a um, um, search and rescue dog this time. I did train Gypsy for search and rescue. So 
need a collar. Um, whatever you choose, research it, know how to use it. This is my favorite one right here, but that is a tool. And it needs to do more than just hang around his neck for something to hang um, his um, tags on. All right, so what are we gonna do next, boss man? Hmm? We need to move on, don't we? Let's show the next thing we need, right? Okay. Let me see how I can do this. <laughs> All right, so the next thing you gotta have is a kennel. Um, before you bring a puppy home, get a kennel. Make sure it's big enough that it will um, be able to handle that dog when he gets full grown. And then you gotta teach the dog to get in it without having to uh, put your hands on him because a dog that big, you think I'm gonna put him in this kennel? <laughs> so let's see if he'll do it. Boss man coming? Come. Go to bed. Good boy. What a good boy. See now. Again, you do this from puppyhood. Um, <clears throat> all this stuff has to start when they're real young. If you're going to get a big dog, get a little dog that's going to grow into a big dog. Cup. You can't handle them trying to train them at this size. You gotta get this part done right off the get-go because eventually they're gonna be big. Um, I don't know if you can notice my arms this far away, but we have put up with a lot of scratches and we're old, so we have uh, skin that tears easy and he's notorious to tear your skin with his dew claws. Um, not so much with his teeth, he's really gentle with his teeth, Although he will put them on you from time to time, you'll feel them. Um, but, um, and all big dogs, all of them, no matter which breed or if they're mixed breed or what have you, they all have their own little personalities, things you have to learn about. But the main, the main basics for a beginner is you have to be able to handle your dog. And that starts when they're little. All right, so I'm gonna move on to um, how we get them to this place right here. Well, first of all, um, when we brought him home and Gypsy alive, we had, a, this was Gypsy's kennel all, her whole 13 years and now he's inherited it. Um, Gypsy's in another video on my channel, a German Shepherd that I had for 13 years. I still miss her. Wow. <laughs> anyway, so um, we've had these kennels and from the minute you bring them home, you put them in there and you make them stay in there at night. Um, every night, every single night. And then if you go anywhere and you leave your dog at home, it has to go in there. Now you have to understand that you gotta kinda take the weight of the dog and the size of it is, and that'll kinda give you a gauge on how long they can go without going to the bathroom, without having to go pee or poop or whatever. Um, so you gotta keep that in mind. Now, boss man at this point, you can see him, he looks at me every time I say his name. Um, we go to Albuquerque and sometimes we go on six, maybe eight hours and he, he does fine in here. Um, but we don't put him in this kennel unless we really have to. If somebody comes to the door, I want him in here. I don't want to have to worry about him nipping somebody that he don't know. I don't trust him yet. He's still a puppy. Um, if, if for any reason that anything's going crazy around the house, this kennel is where he goes. If somebody comes here to work, if somebody's just visiting, whatever, if he don't know him and he acts funny, then he has to go in here. If the UPS man comes, he goes in the kennel. So, and you have to make them, get them where they'll go in there easily. It's, you don't want to have to fight with your dog. <laughs> I hate that, you know, and it's not good for you. It's not good for the dog. It's just, it's just going to put you in a situation where he's going to end up in this kennel in a garage and you won't look at him but maybe long enough to feed him once a day. And again, that just rips the heart and soul right out of them. These guys have so much to offer. All right, so I'm going to move on and show you how to get this far um, with training. And you've seen what we were doing outside um, in the beginning of the video. And that is play. And that... When you get to that point, you, if, with a big dog like this, you may want to have a trainer help you because it can get rough, as you've seen. You know, and if you're not used to moving out of the way and knowing how to move and, 
and that sort of thing you just get bit and <laughs> you get mad you go on you don't want to do it no more so just that goes away and that's a really important part of dog training and training keeping your dog happy is that outside playing and so that's part of the deal um so let me move on i want to show and from uh i want to do another little thing and demonstrate um how we get this far all right so enough of that let's let the boss man out i'm sure he's ready to get out of this box <clears throat> all right buddy Boss man front. Sit. Yes. Good boy. What a good boy. Down. Yes. Good boy. Boss man, stand. Stand, stand, yes. <laughs> stand, 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 yes. Good boy. Down. Yes, good boy. All right. All right, so that's how you do it. Um, how you get there is, hmm, how can I explain this? All right, leave my camera. Come, front, sit, yes. All right, so to start with what we did, we just took some dog food, bought them in stand, yes. And we just kind of went over back his head like that, and when his butt hit the ground, we said sit and yes, gave him a treat. And then when we wanted him to go down for the down, we did the same thing. Down. Yes. There you go. Now, stand, stand, stand. And you can see that one we just have to work on so we get him to figure it out. Stand. Come on, stand. Yes, good boy. Close enough. All right, now, you also want to teach them to speak. I don't want to do it for, it's a trick, but when we're in a motel room, I like them to speak without voice command. I like to do it on hand, hand signals. So how we do that, <laughs> you see how rambunctious he gets. And this, this is the whole point of starting young. So you can get some of this out of the way before he gets so rambunctious. All right. Speak, speak, yes, good boy. Speak, 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 good, yes, good boy. I like it to be loud. All right, and one other thing, one last little thing I teach. Let me see how I can get in front of the camera. I think you can see it right there. All right, now. You always want your dog watching you, so you can just take a treat, one in each hand, put it out here this way, so he ain't looking at my hands. He's looking me in the eye. Watch. Yes. Speak. Speak. Yes. Good boy. <laughs> you dropped it. <laughs> All right, so that's how that works. Boss man, come. Hup. Uh, so there's another command, hup. Um, puts him where I want him. Um, usually up somewhere. When I put him in the truck, I use that command. Um, I want him on the couch, I use that command. If I want him in his chair, I point at it and use that same command. And eventually, I'll be using that at the vet's office to get him up on the weighing table or wherever they want him. So these are the important things that a beginner, big dog owner needs to know. And it's, it doesn't matter if it's a Rottweiler, it doesn't matter if it's a Doberman, it doesn't matter if it's a German Shepherd, 
Oh boy, I could just name off any long list of dogs. Now he's behind the couch because it's cool back there. Um, and it is hot here today. So I'm not going to bother him anymore, but I am going to talk just a little bit longer. Again, um, to me these dogs are precious. They're smart, they're capable, they're able, they learn. When I teach my dog to be a pet in the house, again, it's a pet. Um, I use sentences. Uh, a lot of people say you use one words like, and I do somewhat, like, you know, for sit down, stay, stand, watch, and all that. But if I want to go to town, I use a sentence. You want to go to town? Um, he's subject to be out here looking at me. You want to go for riding a truck? Now, those two, saying those two things in the beginning, send him straight to his kennel. He'd go in his kennel rather than go ride in a truck because he didn't like it. But we got him past that, and now he loves to go. And But it took some patience, and patience is one of the things you have to have. Um, these dogs, if you try to scold them, especially the Catahoulas are bad. If you scold them too much, if you go too overboard with them, they don't really have a shutdown. They're, they don't have a flop. They have a fight. Um, at that point so um, you want to be careful of that if you're fair and patient they're more than fair they're more than wanting to learn they're more and they put forth 110 percent or more in everything they do so it goes to say that if you go past that with them if you push them too far you know and there's other dogs the Dobermans would turn on you if you went too far um, so my recommendation is, is, is do your studying, do your learning, watch some videos, learn how to um, do positive reinforcement. Now, boss man, he requires a little bit of negative reinforcement, but as the days go on, it's less and less of that. He knows what he's allowed to do, what he's not. Um, the kennel comes in handy, like if he's getting into something that I don't want him to get into, I tell him where I want him to go, I tell him to go to bed, and as you've seen, he will go there, and I lock the door on it, let him think about it. Um, never scold the dog while he's in that kennel. Never raise your voice at him, never shake the cage, none of that. Put him in there and walk away. If you're having a bad day and the dog is creating a situation <laughs> making your bad day worse where you just don't have the patience, put him in there, put him in that kennel, and walk away and everything will be good when he comes out. Um, again, don't, if he's barking, wanting out, I wouldn't suggest doing anything other than trying to get him to be quiet. And once he is quiet, then give him a treat and let him out. Um, but if he's just really raising cane in the kennel, it's probably a bad idea to let him out because then he'll know that, you know, that if I raise cane in the kennel, they'll let me out. So it's just sort of common sense stuff. And, um, Anybody that wants a big dog, great. These, this particular dog I would not have around small children, toddlers, you know, any, any child that couldn't look down on this dog, I wouldn't allow this dog to be around. I would not want any child looking at this dog eyeball to eyeball at the same height. I, I just, I wouldn't trust that. So, um, now as time goes on, when he gets fully grown, he gets fully trained, he gets fully, you know, um, socialize that will change but in the beginning um, these you have to be very careful because they get big really fast so um, let's see I'm really running long here but it is kind of an important um, subject so I guess I'll just touch on the basics collar and leash um, and start that with when they're young because you don't want them yanking you down and I didn't do enough of that with boss man because we're wide open spaces out here um, on the other hand, I'm able to handle him quite well without a leash. He comes to me when I call him, um, just about every time. Um, let's see. The kennel. Got to have a kennel from the get-go. That's the dog's safe place. It becomes his safe place. It's where he'll go. You'll feed him in there, give him water in there. We don't boss man anymore. The kennel is only used now for him because he's getting so good about things. We don't lock him up at night anymore. He sleeps here on the couch. And that means he's out, and so and he's watchful. So and that's what he's for. He's my pet, but he's my watchdog. He lets me know. Um, 
We raised him around our cats and we don't have any trouble with the cats and that's an issue that you have to really work on from puppyhood. Um, if you let them grow up and keep them separated, then most likely your cats or, or other small um, pets won't be um, um, safe. <laughs> but if you can uh, get the puppy and then raise the puppy with these other animals, um, smaller animals, that seems to work every time. Let's see what else. Um, cuts and bruises. If you're older and you got skin that tears easy, you might want to consider a small dog. Because <laughs> um, you're constantly going to be getting skin tears and it takes a while for them to heal. When you get luckily, when you get older, you don't feel it so much. It's not like you know, you don't have that much feeling in your skin and it tears real easy, but um, that's an issue. Um, and not from the teeth so much, but from the dew claws and their paws. Uh, <clears throat> they have big dogs have big paws, and the Catahoula Cur especially has extra dew claws. So let's see what else. I want to try to make this as thorough as possible. Hmm. I guess that's about it. If you want to go further and train your dog to be more than just a companion. A dog that you can put in your vehicle and go someplace with, that you can stay in the motel with. If you want to um, make your dog into an attack dog or a serious guard dog or any other highly trained dog, I would I would I would um, recommend going to a professional. However, um, all dog trainers aren't equal, so be careful there. Make make sure you do your research and find out. You know, find get some. Um, some um, references from people's dogs. <laughs> you want to see some dogs that this, these people have trained um, is, is what the best way to say it. All right, so that being said, um, this is my video for um, beginners. <laughs> it was a um, kind of a, a thing I seen on the internet this morning. They said if your next video, make it about beginners. So this is beginners, um, beginner um, big dog ownership. <laughs> All right, um, anything else I want to say? Probably not. So, and I'm not real good at getting on and off the camera on YouTube. So that's why I started shooting videos and just leave me, leaving me out of it. <laughs> but this is important and I want to get in and I wanted to visit. And one last thing before I go, I want to get this right. I had a video that brought me up to 4,000 viewing hours. Um, gave me about half of them and it also gave me about half of my subscribers that I have which is 485 I think somewhere in there I'm not sure I can't remember maybe it's 28 428 and um, I want to thank all those folks that subscribed and tuned in and watched my channel um, I'm at close to 100,000 views of course everybody's not watching all of it all of them and I don't blame them <laughs> I watch them go back and watch them and some of them is just absolutely boring <laughs> but I only got 72 out there this be number 73 and I hope it's not too boring I hope it's a little bit um, you know informative um, in the meantime thank you to everybody who subscribed so far all 428 of you thank you everyone who has viewed my channel all 90 some odd thousand Thank you for all the viewing hours, 4,000 viewing hours. Um, thank you, YouTube, for letting me play with your platform. This is Mountaintop Bob signing off. See ya.